Um, yes, yeah, so for those of you who were at uh, Jan Hagitsky's talk this morning, um, I'm also going to talk about translation, uh, translators invisibility or visibility. Um, and I'm quoting Baker here, um, that very little attention has been paid to, I'm not quoting, um, um, has been paid to personal style of translators uh, in translation studies due to the persistent idea that style is mainly a characteristic of the original text and not of the translator. Um, there have been uh, some stylometric studies by Jan Hrabitsky, um on this um, that sh also show that um, the translator is hard uh, to, um, to unveil uh, in silometric methods, uh, mainly when you use delta. Uh, I will say a bit more about that in a minute. Um, recently, there have been some studies uh, using machine learning approaches, mainly uh, looking at engrams that have been somewhat su successful. Um, but all of these studies mainly are about um, translate, uh, translator attribution or how we can use these methods to, um, to distinguish between translators, uh, but not so much about what actually makes the translators um, different from each other. Uh, and that's what I'm uh, mostly interested in. So what features make the individual style of the translator different from other translators? So rather than a method, I'm focusing on the individual uh, differences. Um, so delta is not very, delta procedures aren't very good at um, finding translators. Um, uh, although it's very successful for authorship attribution, um, and we find that author is nearly always the, the, ma the most important signal. Um, and then maybe there are other factors that are also more important than the translator. Um, so in some cases, the translator can be detected. Um, for instance, when a translator in, is a, yeah, uses very free translation. Um, but uh, Jan Rybitsky also proposed other stylometric uh, methods uh, that Helena also uh, showed you, like Burroughs Seta, uh, Sita to investigate the translator's style. Um, and I'm not going to explain the whole procedure of uh, Zeta analysis here. I think most of you know, uh, but most important to know right now is that it's not looking at the most frequent words, but at the middle uh, frequency uh, words and also uh, uh, at the consistency of uh, the frequency uh, throughout the text. Um, for this study, I looked at the oeuvre of uh, Henning Mankel, a Swedish writer, very, very well known for his crime series, Wallander. Um, but he also has a very extensive oeuvre, uh, so he also wrote literary novels, uh, children's literature, nonfiction, theater plays. Um, and I'm using his oeuvre or only one author because I wanted to take out the factor of author because it's so uh, important. So I wanted to see what happens if you look at mainly one author and different translators. Um, and also maybe a kind of an unusual language combination of Swedish and Dutch, because I think it's important that we use all kinds of language combinations also because, for instance, a study by Lee from 2018 show, uh, shows that uh, the language combination can influence the translator visibility. He looked at uh, Korean English and French English and found that it's easier to detect the translator in uh, Korean and English. Um, and of course, Dutch and uh, Swedish are very uh, uh, similar or um, related to each other, so it's, it's even harder probably to detect the translator, and I like a challenge. Um, so my corpus um, consists of 32 Swedish novels uh, by Manko and the 32 Dutch translations of his works uh, in four different genres, uh, crime novels, literary novels, children's books, and nonfiction. Um, and then I had some reference material, 10 novels by other best-selling authors from Sweden. Um, I'll just quickly show you bootstrap consensus tree of um, the corpus. So this is the translation corpus. Um, 
And uh, as expected, we don't see clustering by translator. Sometimes there is, so the, the colors indicate the genre, uh, and the yellow ones are the non manko um, works. The other ones are all by manko. Um, so the red ones are crime novels, for instance. Uh, you do see, like, the second. Uh, acronym is the translator, so you sometimes do see a clustering by translator, um, but the question is, is this because of the translator or maybe because um, they, trans they happen to translate similar books, because that's what happens um, in, in reality, is that one, uh, so these, the ones there at the arrow are all um, Wallander uh, books, actually. Um, so they do cluster by translator, seem to cluster by translator, but if we look at the Swedish or the originals in the bootstrap consensus tree, we see a very similar clustering. So it doesn't seem to um, be because of the translator. Um, there was one exception there, the arrow. Uh, that book is over here in the original. And what you also see is in the, in the Swedish originals, the distances are um, bigger. Uh, so it's, um, there seems to be some kind of translation, maybe a translation universal. The differences between the works um, appear to be smaller in the translations. So there is some kind of uh, effects of translation going on. Um, so I performed the Zeta analysis, um, and I will just show you one translator here, because I only have 10 minutes. Um, so, and that's uh, Janni Middelbeek Orthise, the red one, um, and I compared um, her uh, translations to other translations in the same genre. So I only looked at the works that clustered together and compared them to, like, I compared her translations to the ones from other translators. Um, and here's a list of um, most distinctive words and some uh, striking features I found here. The first one is that you see a lot of synonyms, so uh, the color-coded words are, they both have the same meaning, but, um, uh, yeah, there's just a individual preference for one or the other. Um, and the second feature that was, uh, that I found for uh, this translator was um, that she used more archaic, old-fashioned, maybe more formal words um, than the other translator, compared to the other translators. Um, so I picked the words that have a synonym that would be less formal or less archaic. Uh, and then, well, the yellow ones I was sure about and the, the white ones we could discuss about if you know Dutch. Um, and also, some of these words, I think, are indicating some form of translation -y. So I picked one example here. Um, so this is about the words varin and varop. Um, you get sentences like this. So the, the first one is the original. Stranden han gick på Jylland och Skagen. So literally, that would mean he walked, uh, oh, not literally. This would mean something like he walked on the beach of Jylland and Skagen. Um, in the Dutch translation, it says, het strand waarop hij liep was dat van Jutland en Skagen. And I think that's very um, a marked. Um, um, so it's literally the beach he walk, walked on was that of Jutland and Skagen. So I think this is a form of translation ease, and you can also see it in the words. Uh, I also looked at n-grams. Um, I'm just showing you four grams here. Um, and what's interesting about n-grams is that they can also give us some clue about grammatical differences. Um, and what I found here for this translator, for instance, was the um, order of the verbs um, that she had. The, so in Dutch you can say both wat er is gebeurd of wat er gebeurd is of was. Uh, so um, the auxiliary verb can be before or after the main verb, um, this is both grammatical correct, is there are some regional, um, there are some regional variants, uh, but she clearly has a uh, preference for 
is gebeurd so for the auxiliary first compared to the other translators. Um, some concluding remarks. So, uh, stylometric methods using delta procedures are in most cases unable to cluster words by translator. However, zeta analysis uh, can actually unveil individual style differences between translators, such as a preference for synonyms, archaic word uses, or translationese. Um, and I'm in this project, I'm also looking at, I, couldn't, I didn't have time to show you this, but at mean sentence length and lexical diversity in, measured by type token ratio, because I think it can possibly add some valuable information about individual translator style. And uh, so just a concluding remark, something I also wanted to mention is, um, I think we have to keep in mind that style of translators can also change over time, just like uh, style of uh, authors. And I don't think we think about that uh, very often. Thank you.